I want to preface this video by saying I am extremely sorry for everything that happened. I understand that my viewers don't and would probably never truly understand who I am behind the screen. But to myself, this is a personal platform. And I'm really thankful for all the members of the community who are helping me throughout the situation. I know it's tough and confusing for all members involved. What's the point of this video? For me, there's three reasons why I'm making this video. Number one, I want to give a highly accessible resource for my friends to understand why I did what I did, what happened, and how I feel about it, etc. Number two, I want fans to be able to see this video and be able to learn from my mistakes. It took me like two years to figure it out. Number three is for myself to be able to reconcile everything that happened and put it behind me, even if people are going to call me bad things. Before I start talking about how everything happened, this is not an excuse. It's an explanation. The difference is I take ownership for my actions. What is grooming? Grooming is when adults do things to kids to get them to be okay with sexual acts and reduce the risk of getting caught. Before I talk, I want to read these patterns of grooming from this source here. Victim selection. Abusers often observe p possible victims and select them based on ease of access to them or their perceived vulnerability gaining access and isolating the victim. Abusers will attempt to physically or emotionally separate a victim from those protecting them and often seek out positions in which they have contact with minors. Trust development and keeping secrets. Abusers attempt to gain trust of a potential victim through gifts, attention, sharing secrets, and other means to make them feel that they have a caring relationship and to train them to keep the relationship secret. Desensitization to touch and discussion of sexual topics. Abusers will often start to touch a victim in ways that appear harmless, such as hugging, wrestling, and tickling, and later escalate to increasingly more sexual contact, such as massages or showering together. Abusers may also show the victim pornography or discuss sexual topics with them to introduce the idea of sexual contact. Attempt by abusers to make their behavior seem natural. To avoid raising suspicions, for teens who may be closer in age to the abuser, it can be particularly hard to recognize tactics used in grooming. Be alert for signs that your teen has a relationship with an adult that includes secrecy, undue influence, or control, or pushes personal boundaries. Now, let's talk about when this first started. This name probably gave Eva a jump scare. I'm sorry, Eva. <laughs> the reason why I'm bringing up this topic was because this was when my vulner vulnerability was on display. I did an action. I had a mental breakdown and decided to post old people pornography in a private server. <laughs> I was losing friends and in servers at the time, I was displaying a hell of a lot of vulnerability. I was, I don't know, maybe 14 years old. Past this point, I'm not going to give ages or time because a lot of this, these situations happened after this situation. But I'll give a general, chronal, I'll say everything in a cr chronological sense. Now onto the way that Mr. Zamboni groomed me. Maybe on accident, I don't know. Also, I might refer to Mr. Zamboni as Olivia. I use them interchangeably. Victim selection. So, here, I was displaying a lot of vulnerability. I didn't really have a lot of friends to talk to online. I'm scared of talking to my parents. I don't know what to do, and I'm obviously feeling a lot of shame, which I still do feel to this day. This gave... A very easy opportunity for Mr. Zamboni to talk. They talked to me in a very parental sense, helping me through the situation, talking about their past experiences and building trust up with me to help me throughout the situation. They called me, invited me to their server, etc. 
Gaining Access and Isolation This section will be very brief, but for the sake of going over all the bulletin points, this was very easy for them in this situation. Because on Discord, nobody wants to talk about their situation with their parents. And isolation is as easy as making a group chat or starting a Discord server. <laughs> Trust Development and Keeping Secrets Few fans will know that I have a private server, where I talk to friends online I'm closer with, and also make content which is kept secret for the sake of you guys. Olivia was part of the server. I did invite them, but this most likely made it easier for them to get me to be comfortable with keeping secrets with them. Particularly, this would apply to Fuda Squad. Fuda Squad started in the prehistoric server which belonged to Abed Shark 10. However, this was really Olivia's channel because the whole channel channel centered around Olivia drawing explicit images of fan-made My Singing Monsters with penises that were mostly not hers. Olivia might say, oh, well, I didn't try to keep that a secret, but it definitely did feel like an unsaid role, and, espe and especially with how much shame of sharing pornography and sexual interests, which is normal and to be expected, it definitely applies here. I don't need to show evidence of Fudo Squad happening because it's already been shared previously in the past. Desi Desensitization to touch and discussion of sexual topics. We are online, so there's no way Olivia can physically touch me. However, discussion of sexual topics was so normalized by Olivia drawing penises of monsters and calls. At first, I found it funny, but over time, Olivia moved on to more sexual things, like actual girls, which sometimes would be little girls, lolly, and she would mention this in calls. She would draw sexual images of what appeared to be little girls in front of me. I remember, um, I forget which monster, but it was on Modern Island. Oh, it was called Pampered, and there was a whole deal of people drawing porn of Pampered, and she encouraged me to draw porn of Pampered. Um, which was definitely a lolly type character. Um, she she talk about lolly. She talk about her posting lolly. It it was it was a serious issue. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Attempt by abuser to make behavior seem natural. A lot of similar topics are popping up and they connect shockingly well, but they would talk about how liking Lollicon is okay in front of me. I mean, after all, they would draw it and they made a server called Cheese Dimension where everything goes and quote, n no judgment. They also used the idea of him being asexual and autistic to make it seem like they weren't doing it sexually, like porn was just one of their... The hyperfixations. What the God. All of this behavior led me to truly believing in my heart that it was normal for people to have a pedophilic paraphilia and etc. This is why I was so quick to say I'm a pedophile on Twitter, when it is likely, at least to my own understanding, far from the truth. Let me preface by saying, I'm a small, frail, I lost an arm wrestling contest to my 12-year-old sister, 17-year-old, mixed-race, half-Asian, half-white person who weighs 107 pounds and looks like this. I've seen in pictures many Asians, or just people in general, can have really small breasts, almost flat, and almost my taste can seriously range and although my tastes can seriously range, in photo galleries I have shared on Twitter, you can kind of see there's no lollycon or pedophilic stuff going on, to my knowledge. I will admit there is few and far in between lolly pictures and gel boru favorites and pixa favorites. I will get rid of the latter since I lost access to gel boru, but most of these would be at the bottom of my... at the at the peaks of my mental breakdowns for different reasons, which goes into a different topic I will discuss later in the video. With the popular screenshots that are being excessively shared, most of these are from the Cheese Dimension server, 
And honestly, they'd be the extremes of images I could find online. Often I sent these to, in a messed up way, to entertain and fit in to people in the server. I could say for certain there was a sense of, look, Olivia, I'm doing the same bull crap you are doing, isn't that cool? Kind of thing going on. What I did was seriously messed up, however. I think it's absolutely repulsive, and seeing these screenshots makes me both want to vomit, stab myself, and jump off a fucking building. Knowing all of this makes me feel absolutely sick. It makes me feel like all of the friends I had who were a part of that server could have been a lie. It was especially awful because oftentimes the only way I could really interact with them was either through DMs, which felt scary to me, or a porn server. I truly felt like, and I stu still do feel like I'm friends with them, but I feel as though I have to distance myself from that friend group because grooming. <laughs> Am I saying that with 100% certainty, Mr. Zamboni is someone who tried to take advantage of me? Not necessarily. The main point that I want to make is that Olivia's actions align very close to that of a groomer. It's pretty much grooming, and it affected me very, very, very negatively. I'm still going to use the monsters they made for me because I spent so much time developing them as characters and taking comfort for, from them. They don't feel all the way like his monsters to me anymore. However, if they ever want me to get rid of them out of anger, frustration, or whatever, I will. And I am still very, very frustrated at them for this happening and truly believe that they should be deplatformed because they clearly don't know how to treat children properly and I feel as though they aren't going to change their mind on doing or talking about sexual things in front of children. And to the audience, to the 20,000 or however many people watching this, if someone any older than like three years older or heck even two, assuming you're under 18 or you know even if, tries to do sexual things around you, get out immediately. Don't let anyone normalize sexual topics around you because it will mess you up because it messed me up. I, I know in the past I would talk about sexual topics and post censored porn in my public server. I, I thought it was okay since my server was aimed towards teens and talking about sexual topics in front of minors was okay. Knowing I did this also makes me feel absolutely disgusted at myself. I truly didn't know what I was doing, and looking back, it makes me feel like I was mirroring someone else's behavior. Speaking of mirroring someone else's behavior... Verbal abuse and physical abuse. I can't talk about the situation without bringing up my mom. My mom's actions plus Olivia's, even though they weren't involved with each other, truly made a stirring pot for disaster. Pretty much all throughout my life, my mom would scream at me for sometimes even as long as four hours because she has a bipolar mood disorder, and back then, she would often not be on proper meds for it. Oftentimes, whenever I did something childish or wrong, she'd yell at me and talk about how her father treated her worst, how she would get belted, and also molested. I have depression. I have major depressive disorder. I am trying to heal from an unhealthy complex where I believe any time I do something wrong, I should be tormented for it. Oftentimes, this complex would pop up whenever I did something wrong. Last Friday, in math class, I realized that I didn't submit a form I was supposed to. Immediately, I had a mental breakdown where I couldn't process things properly. I could barely say words out of my own mouth, stuttered, and really, really wanted to and might have even hurt myself, whether that be picking at a scab, punching myself, I don't know. It might have also put me in sleep paralysis because I could barely keep my head up and I was shaking, grabbing my backpack, wishing for an escape. I was confused. Oftentimes, how I would cope with these mental breakdowns is I would look at pictures of people being tortured, murdered, etc., and often of little girls too because, you know, my mom got molested, so I should be getting molested too. If, 
if I should be getting beat up worse, I should be, that, that's just included with it. I shouldn't have to explain why this is really unhealthy, but it really is. I want anybody who's watching this who might have depression to understand for no reason should you punish yourself. You should take responsibility for bad actions you do and move on. It doesn't do much good to simply hurt because you do something bad. And I know people get hurt from when they do something bad, but that doesn't mean you have to hurt yourself. No. no. Now I don't see my mom anymore when I I don't see my mom anymore. When I came out as trans publicly, I lived with her for 3 months. She lied to me about her financial situation to the very end until it was too late and she couldn't afford her apartment anymore. And when this happened, she had to move out and I helped her move out. In the car, I remember shaking my legs which i didn't have control over because i i'm pretty sure i have an adhd disorder might be wrong but she attacked me for this and i ended up in juvie because i attacked her back i am truly trying to battle these negative thoughts of course, I, th I think a lot of people might not believe me that I am really trying to make sure that these mental breakdowns don't happen, that I don't do stupid fucking shit. Hi, Dad. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> where, where, okay, stupid fucking shit. A lot of people aren't going to believe me that I'm actually trying to get help unless I explain something that I'm actually doing. So, the... The main thing that I want to explain is the cognitive behavior model, since it was an overarching thing I learned in my five-day group therapy session. And also, generally, throughout therapy sessions I've been in throughout the past two years. The cognitive behavior model. Thoughts create emotions, which create behavior. This could, this could stem from a triggering event, which leads to a negative thought which leads to an emotional response, to physical symptoms, to then a behavioral response. Through therapy, which is said to be the best treatment for depression, I try to understand my triggers, how to find cognitive distortions or irrational dots, and to understand physical symptoms to prevent negative behavioral responses. Hopefully one day I can make a video talking about it. Some of the words I'm saying sound too complex for some of you, like cognitive, which just means the mind. So hopefully I can elaborate further. And I think that's all I have to talk about the situation so far. Maybe I might have to make a part two, who knows. We'll see how things continue to unfold. I just hope I can prove to the community I am a better person and start to interact with a few people. I want to prove to people they can be safe around me, but of course, this will take time. And I'm really glad I could get this all out. That's weird, but a lot of people in this community seriously helped me out. And Without some of you guys, who knows where I would go. I feel so much better. Audio Jungle